Welcome back. This is the Tellier Desjardins segment of Chicken Philosophy, or playlist, or podcast, or show. The Tellier Desjardins show on Chicken Philosophy. I'm, I'm not really sure how to uh, how to put that just yet. I'll work on it. I'll fine tune that one. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna try not to let it affect me too much, like make me self-conscious, but that first Tellier de Jardin video is the first video on chicken philosophy that YouTube has decided to actually like show people that I don't know. So hi, hi, um, people who don't know me, M multiple, three digits, three di like 200 people have seen that video. I haven't had a video go that viral. Well, maybe one or two, but anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, uh, shall I? And also this time, I think I'm going to leave it in the hands of editor Edward to choose the music. All right, I am sure that he has picked something lovely and it just, the sound quality is better. It ends up, you know, showing as a copyright on the video. So if I were monetizing it, I wouldn't be able to monetize it because of the music, but I'm not really doing it for the money. Okay, so, uh, ouch, I just rolled over my left big toe with a rolly chair. It was painful. All right, and I uh, hope everybody's doing well, and cheers. Got some coffee happening here. Okay. Picking up right where we left off. By the way, if you haven't seen me wearing this in front of this specifically before, then click here and start with episode one, because we're jumping in like mid-paragraph here and really picking up where we left off last time. So, I'm assuming you're all caught up, whoever's watching this. <clears throat> Michael Benedict describes it in his collected abstracts from the first conference on cyberspace. Quote, cyberspace is a globally networked, computer-sustained, computer-accessed, and computer-generated, multi-dimensional, artificial, or quote within quotes virtual and quote within quotes reality in this world on to which every computer screen is a window actual geographical distance is irrelevant objects seen or heard are neither physical nor necessarily presentations of physical objects but are rather in form character and action made up of data of pure information. This is making me nostalgic for the original Tron. Um, anyway. <laughs> now, cyberspace is starting to take on more and more of a form what with social media and YouTube and all, uh, Netflix and you know all these different things that are kind of defining what the internet, what place it has in the lives of the average person. This information is derived in part from the operation of the natural physical world, i.e. Me, me sitting in front of, well, it's a phone. That is a little odd. If uh, you told someone in 1994, <laughs> you know, so what do you, what do you, you know, do with the internet? Oh, well, I talk into my phone and they're like, oh, so you record the audio? Like, no, no, no. It's like high definition. Never mind. This information is derived in part, yes, I read that already, the natural physical world, but is derived primarily from the immense traffic of symbolic information, images, sounds, and people that constitute human enterprise in science, art, business, and culture, end quote. The form most of these exchanges take is the computer, quote, bulletin board, end quote. Yeah, it's sort of like the way that people exchange information these days is by nailing it to the church door in the middle of the town. Like, this is a little dated. The bulletin board there, the bulletin board there. That's not the primary uh, form of these information exchanges anymore. 
but it's fun to read about. It's like uh, watching Max Headroom or something where they're going around with these giant TV cameras that are broadcasting live. And if the red light's on, then the criminal behaves himself. Like, I mean, I guess it's a little like that, kind of, except not really at all. A little. Like, if somebody takes out their phone and films somebody, then they, they change their behavior, you know. All right. In certain contexts. Where was I? On this, the bulletin board, any person with the simplest of computers and a modem, remember those, can call a central master computer. Or is this a BBC we're talking about? I mean, a, is that the right word? Which one's the... <laughs> the British News Corporation beat never mind you know what I mean the BBC the I'll just keep reading those before the internet really got going people would have someone's friend would have a, like a supercomputer at home and people would call in and there'd be maybe one line or two lines so usually when you try to call to download pirate things at a very slow pace, then you would get a busy signal and you just had to keep going until you got through and then your mom would come in and be like, I need to call somebody. You'd be like, ah, ah, I just finally connected. I'm downloading the new Windows. Never mind. Okay. <clears throat> Once connected, a person may receive or distribute messages on any given topic to one or a million people. Now we're up in the hundreds of millions at least, maybe in the billions, I'm not sure. As John Barlow describes it, quote, in this silent world, all conversation is typed. No, not so much anymore. That lasted like a little while. To enter it, I mean, people still type things, but that's not the only form of information. To enter it, one forsakes both body and place and becomes a thing of words alone. You can see what your neighbors are saying, parentheses, or recently said, end parentheses, but not what they or their physical, but not what either they or their physical surroundings look like. Again, yeah, it's, it's an old document, 1994. Town meetings are <clears throat> continuous and discussions range on everything from sexual kinks, no, to uh, depreciation schedules. End quote. Parentheses, quote, trouble in cyberspace, end quote, the humanist, September, October, 1991, end parentheses. The extent of these data expressways is staggering. There are literally thousands of individual bulletin boards around the world, and nearly all of them are linked by one incredible global network the internet. Sounding like some sinister creation of an Ian Fleming villain, the internet links more than 8,000 separate bulletin boards and networks, accommodating 10 million people around the world. As John Katz notes in Rolling Stone, quote, nobody can even calculate how much information is on it what its boundaries are, or who will eventually control it. Mm -hmm. It contains, it's like that, uh, this, the devil card. Sorry for those who were shocked by tarot. Uh, I don't know, it's just showing it to people who, I, there, I got a comment from someone named um, Kneeling Catholic. Thank you, hello. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this. Sorry, my mouth is so foul. Um, I, up till now, it's just been like my 20 closest friends watching these, and now it's just showing it to people who are interested in Telier de Jaron. Welcome. Anyway, um, yeah, in that card, the people aren't chained. They're holding, voluntarily holding the chain, similar to clicking the uh, terms and conditions. I agree to the terms and conditions of any whatever meta platform or Google platform or whatever platform it is, um, it's voluntary. Uh, the news groups, as far as I understand, are still there. Like uh, there was a time when literally the internet was just 
people sharing information absolutely freely and it was neither done by some anarchist who was setting up a platform for people to do that nor you know some capitalist like Zuckerberg or whatnot um, it was just you know there it was like a byproduct of the military originally um, then they decided to make it available to the public after they had been using it for like 20 years or something anyway I don't know the specifics about all that feel free to comment below if you'd like um, yes, it contains entire scientific and academic archives, complex networks from aeronautics and African wildlife to the CIA World Facebook. Fact, fact book. This is 1994. There's no Facebook. Edward. My eyes, yeah, I'm trying to do this without reading glasses or magnifying glasses. One day I'm going to have to get reading glasses. It's totally going to alter my uh, aesthetic on this uh, program. Anyway. But I mean, I don't know, with a magnifying glass, what am I going for, Sherlock Holmes or something? Okay. <laughs> um, yes, those who study such things predict that the users of internet, not the internet, inter the users of internet are likely to double each year. So what were they saying? It's like, eight, it's 10 million. So from 1994, okay, starting with 10 million as one, how many years has it been since then? Uh, so 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, 250, 600, 500, 1,000, 24, 2,000, uh, I, yeah. It doubled for a while, and, and now it can't double anymore because there's still poverty in parts of the world. Pretty much everybody is on the internet who can be. Okay, um, yes. Vinton Cert, designer of the internet system, says that by the year 2000, there will be more than 100 million users. Quote, this kind of reaching out from anywhere in the world, end quote, he says in Katz's article, quote, um, yeah, he has got to change the way we think about our world. It will become critical for everyone to be connected. Anyone who isn't will essentially be isolated from the world. <gasps> I'm deleting my Twitter. Oh, wait, that doesn't exist anymore. I'm deleting my ex. Uh, don't call the police. I'm not suggesting I'm going to murder my... I'm saying I'm going to delete the app called X. Never mind. <clears throat> End quote. And perhaps, in Darwinian terms, be selected out of em the emerging node of evolution. Yeah. But the thing is, like, the off-the-grid folks don't generally believe in the mass consensus of reality. I mean, you know, there's exceptions, I suppose. I'm as off-the-grid as one can get while still being on the grid, I suppose. <laughs> in light of developments such as computer bulletin boards and, quote, super information highways, end quote, like the internet, Telliard's fantastic notions don't seem so fantastic. He is, it turns out, the unsung prophet of our collective future. It is time that we begin to look forward to what these developments are going to mean to us personally, developmentally. Jarnol says that, quote, humankind is now caught up as though in a train of gears at the heart of a continually accelerating vortex of self-totalization. All right, future me is going to, like, hear present me read that aloud and then understand it. I'm just going to keep reading. End quote. We need to consider how the inevitable changes in our nature are going to affect us as individuals, spiritually, psychologically, and pathologically. That doesn't sound good. One advantage, though, in, uh, to facing what is happening to us is that we can stop, quote, groping about, end quote, in the dark, and take conscious control of our evolution to speed it on its way. Quit the night and seek the day. Welcome to the hive mind. We are the Borg. We are, I'm, I'm just joking a little. We are, therefore, in the latter 20th century, at the threshold of another great leap in evolution. They were 30 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Before everything 
before that, before all that other stuff. Sorry. I mean, maybe maybe they were right. It's just they were so innocent in 1994, weren't they? Or we, for some of us. We are, yes, we are therefore in the latter 20th century at the threshold of another great leap in evolution. <gasps> Is it the apocalypse? Is it Y2K? Kidding. The contraction and unification, by the way, apocalypse means like wedding, so that yeah, like wedding, the songs of Solomon on a profound macrocosmic scale. It's like, it doesn't sound so bad. Anyway, it, plus if you read Revelation as a metaphor, then, you know, your life changes from, you know, if you were like cowering under your bed with a hammer before watching the old and on repeat. Okay, sorry, where were we? The contraction and unification of the human species, the construction of the noosphere, the focusing of our psychic energies, quote, the powers that we have released, end quote, Jardin states in human energy, quote, could not possibly be absorbed by the narrow system of individual or national units which the architects of the human earth have hitherto used. The age of nations has passed. <laughs> Yeah. Someone's going to shoot a, a, a sword out of their mouth and break down the borders, right? Destroy the nations or destroy the borders or whatever. Anyway, sorry. Um, so they say. <laughs> See, which is it, Edward? Is it metaphorical or is it no? Um, yeah, if you're talking Desjardins' vision, then I'm, all, I'm down with his apocalypse. You know what I'm saying? Okay, never mind. Uh, Yes, to build up the earth, end quote. Italics mine, right, okay. Now, how we accomplish this is by correcting our errant perception of reality as being made up of separate units. I am seven of 12. Jardin insists that, quote, to love is to discover and complete oneself in someone other than oneself, an act impossible of general of general realization on earth, so long as each can see in the neighbor no more than a closed fragment following its course through the world. Okay, I think I, I think I get it. It's not the Borg, it's just love. I mean, you know, instead of like peeking through your window late at night, through the window of your neighbor and trying to catch a glimpse, you know, you can just like, Follow them on Instagram. Just don't accidentally click like on an old photo. It's creepy. All right. So anyway, um, it is. It's a step toward the Borg. I mean, the the love Borg, the Borg of love. It is precisely the state, this state of isolation, that will end. No, it got worse. See, that's the thing: is they didn't know it was going to get worse. The internet made it worse. Instead of peeking out the window, people are looking at their phones. They're not even peeking out the window. Anyway, it is precisely, put the, just put this down and peek out the window. Go look at your neighbor. Uh, sorry, I'm just kidding. It is precisely this state of isolation that will end if we begin to discover in each other not merely the elements of one and the same thing, but of a single spirit in search of itself, end quote. The result of such a realization is the newosphere. Towards which we are moving even now, via our cybernetic interconnections. Know it or not, like it or not, want it or not. There's this movie, oh, I can't remember the title. Never mind, forget it. It's just the, the, the villain is singing this love song, but it's a creepy love song because he's obsessed with Kiron, so he's singing in Hindi. Um, if you say yes or if you say no, you're mine, Kiran. Yeah, it's creepy. It's like meant to be creepy, but it sounds like a love song because he's demented and it's like seen from his point of view. Never mind. Okay. Is this obscene? One sec. As our consciousness of unity progresses, the standard of morality will eventually not be placed on the maintenance of private property but upon the health of the whole. Christian communism. 
<coughs> excuse me, excuse me. I just uh, had a little frog in my throat. Okay. Which will become more and more perceptible to us as neogenesis unfolds. But we don't know exactly how this is going to happen. Jardon himself admits that, quote, these perspectives will appear absurd to those who don't see that life is from its origins groping, adventurous, and dangerous. But these perspectives will grow like an irresistible idea on the horizon of new generations, end quote. Indeed, it seems less and less absurd as this very process unfolds before us. Um, so yeah, John R. Mabry is a doctoral student, or was at that time, at the California Institute of Integral Studies and former managing editor of Creation Spirituality Magazine. The previous article appeared in Creation Spiritual, Spirituality Magazine. So there it is. Um, I think that rather than making the second half of this episode, the beginning of the divine milieu. We'll make this a little bit of a short episode so that next time we can start and jump right into the divine milieu by Tellier Desjardins. Until then, this has been Chicken Philosophy bidding you a very merry Christmas and 